Philip Scott Fitzgerald was born Francis Scott Key Fitzgerald on September 24, 1896, in St. Paul, Minnesota. F. Scott Fitzgerald's life is a tragic example of both sides of the American dream, the choice of young love, wealth, and success, and the tragedies associated with excess and failure. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest American writers of the 20th century. Fitzgerald is considered a member of the lost generation of the 1920s. He finished four novels, This Side of Paradise, The Beautiful and Damned, The Great Gatsby, his best known, and Tender is the Night. A fifth unfinished novel, The Love of the Last Tycoon, was published after his death. Fitzgerald also wrote many short stories that treat themes of youth and promise along with age and despair. F. Scott Fitzgerald is often portrayed as a natural-born writer. His talent, says Ernest Hemingway in A Movable Feast, was as natural as the pattern that was made by the dust on a butterfly's wings. But Fitzgerald saw himself in a different light. What little I've accomplished, he said, has been by the most laborious and uphill work. Maybe you know what that's like from your own writing experience. So, to help you on your uphill climb and to show you that you too can write like Fitzgerald, we've selected seven quotations from F. Scott Fitzgerald on writing. Tip number one, start by taking notes. Fitzgerald made a habit of recording his stray thoughts and observations in notebooks. He organized the entries into categories like feelings and emotions, conversations and things overheard, and descriptions of girls. When Fitzgerald was giving writing advice to his mistress, Sheila Graham, in the late 1930s, he advised her to do the same. Sarah will share what Graham, Fitzgerald's mistress, said as she quoted him in her 1940 memoir, Beloved Infidel. You must begin by making notes. You may have to make notes for years. When you think of something, when you recall something, put it where it belongs. Put it down when you think of it. You may never recapture it quite as vividly the second time. Tip number two. Use verbs not adjectives, to keep your sentences moving. Fitzgerald loved to use a stylistic device called synesthesia, or describing one sensory experience in terms of another. Emma, however, will share what Fitzgerald wrote in a 1938 letter to his daughter about the power and importance of verbs. About adjectives. All fine prose is based on verbs carrying the sentence. They make sentences move. Probably the finest technical poem in English is Keats, Eve of St. Agnes. A line like, the hare limped, trembling through the frozen grass, is so alive that you race through it, scarcely noticing it. Yet it has colored the whole poem with its movement. The limping, trembling, and freezing is going on before your own eyes. Tip number three. Don't describe your work in progress to anyone. Fitzgerald's policy was never to talk with other people about the book he was working on. Miles will now share what he wrote to his daughter Scotty in a 1940 letter. I think that it's a pretty good idea not to tell what a thing is about until it's finished. If you do, you'll always seem to lose some of it. It never quite belongs to you so much again. Tip number four, create people, not types. Fitzgerald was known for creating emblematic characters, but he said it was accidental. I had no idea of originating an American flapper when I first began to write, he said in a 1923 interview for Metropolitan Magazine. I simply took girls who I knew very well and, because they interested me as unique human beings, I used them for my heroines. Here, Savannah will share the opening sentence of his 1926 short story, The Rich Boy. Begin with an individual and find that you have created a type. Begin with a type and you find that you've created nothing. Tip number five, use familiar words. Believe it or not, Fitzgerald is responsible for making a number of words popular, such as stinko, t-shirt, and wicked. Fitzgerald, however, made sure he had a deep understanding of each word he chose. 
Tony will share what Fitzgerald said in a 1929 letter to his college friend and fellow writer John Peel Bishop. You ought to never use an unfamiliar word unless you've had to search for it to express a delicate shade where, in effect, you have recreated it. This is a damn good prose rule. Tip number six, be ruthless. A writer has to make some hard choices. Fitzgerald warns about the danger of becoming too attached to something you've written. Keep an objective eye on the whole piece, he says, and if something isn't working, get rid of it. Jose will share what he wrote in a 1933 Saturday Evening Post article titled, 100 False Starts. Better throw it away and start over. This is one of the most difficult decisions that an author must make. And there's often occasion where the decision is, is doubly difficult. When in the last stages of a novel, for instance, when tossing away the whole script is not an option, but an entire favorite character has to be hauled off by the heels, screeching and, and dragging off half a dozen good scenes with it. Tip number seven, know for whom you are writing. Fitzgerald would be shocked to see the immortality his novel, The Great Gatsby, has been granted. But maybe it was because he wrote with a specific audience in mind. Sophia will share a piece from Fitzgerald's author apology for his first novel, This Side of Paradise. My whole theory of writing I can sum up into one sentence. An author must write for the youth of his own generation, the critics of the next generation, and for the schoolmasters of the ever afterward. Now you know Fitzgerald's secrets to writing. Know for whom you are writing. Be ruthless. Use familiar words. Create people, not types. Don't describe your work in progress to anyone. Use verbs, not adjectives, to keep your sentences moving. And Start by taking notes. As you may have discovered from this video, Fitzgerald had a tremendous appreciation for the art of writing. And you now understand a little bit more about the process he used to create some of the greatest American novels. We hope you are inspired to create a great novel of your own. And who knows, maybe you are the next F. Scott Fitzgerald.